Hey guys. So there's a lot going on. I have been in these classes. The other day we had a class that was like, it was literally all day. <laughs> and I have friends that are down here. They're like, hey, like I'd really like to see you. And I'm like, shit, like this one class, cause most of the people are out in California that are putting these classes on. And it's just like, it was three classes back to back to back. And because they're on the West Coast, you know, I'm on, I'm, where am I? I'm central. Wait, am I central now? I'm central now so, because I'm underneath, um, uh, Alabama. So now my time is all off and some of these classes are, you know, the, the, the teacher, instructor, whatever, they are out in California. So when they start the class, you know, like it's probably eight o'clock, but it's maybe 10 here. So these classes, I'll get out of the class at like 2 a.m. One of the classes, we were all in a group. I ended up falling asleep because I was like, uh, it just, it exhausted me. Because one of the classes could be about mortgages and then one class could be about like the remittance coupon and creating your trust and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, if you are kind of stuck in your head from the class before, but then you, now you're in a different class, it's like you have to switch your brain to now like, oh, okay, we're in the remittance class, so let's <laughs> let's switch our brain and let's go to that class because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. These rabbit holes are so deep, and once you get down it, it's like, it's interesting to me because they all kind of are in the same, it's all the same. <laughs> everything it all leads back to like if you if if you're looking at it this way and then you have like all these rabbit holes and everybody goes down the rabbit holes it's crazy to me because they all lead to one thing it all leads to like Jasara Nasara or it all leads to the Sestake trust or it all leads to we have millions on our birth certificate when you guys were born rem remember I talk about that when you guys were born you had a a trust that was created because remember well we don't we won't remember this but um do you remember when we gave back uh the gold <laughs> we gave all the gold back well once we gave all the gold back then um like their other side was that they would pay all of our bills they would you know because like if you look up hjr 192 it says all bills are prepaid and obligated by the government and then if you look at um, 31 USC, 3123, same, same, all bills, prepaid, obligated by the government. And I'm like, damn it, Beavis. Like, it all leads back to that. So when I started down the rabbit holes um, with trying to figure out, like, what the transfer of wealth is, like, what's that mean? What what is What is the transfer of wealth? Because... When you're down the rabbit holes and you hear Trump talk about the transfer of wealth and you hear like, you know, just people talking about leveling the playing field and, you know, we're all going to be one. Well, that's hard for me to wrap my head around because I'm thinking, but how? Because we all live like in different, our lifestyles are all different per, you know, like our degrees or where we work or, you know, our credit score, which is interesting because the credit the three bureaus, um, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, when you think about that, they're actually just companies. They're just, they're just side companies, kind of like um, child support. Child support is just a side company. It's, it's a state-ran, um, you know, program. So even if you have, you know, like maybe your baby daddy is in arrears or, you know, what have you, um, you know, it's, it's state ran. So it doesn't quite matter if he's in arrears or not. Like if anything, I would get him off, like get him out of there completely and then just totally go for, um, go for his Sestake trust. Like if you're only getting like a thousand dollars a month, if you go through that particular way, then you're going to end up getting maybe three grand a month because 
what that one thousand dollars is based off of is his um it's it's his it's his uh wages right that's how they figure out or formulate how much he has to pay to you well since it's a state room ran program have him sign off not that he's signing off on the kid i mean maybe but on the flip side of that like he doesn't necessarily he's really not obligated to it honestly but then you can go back and you know <laughs> get more for the kid because now it's coming out of the the trust it's not necessarily coming out of wages but everything comes out of the trust so if you even look on cornell university law um that actually says uh you know that there's no such thing as like late payments or there's no such thing as um uh foreclosures repos anything like that there that's it's illegal which then that dro dropped me down to another rabbit hole because i was like well how could that be legal because like i've had late payments before um i had my car repoed you know like crazy shit so now that i'm looking at it i'm like holy hell like how how is that how how are late payments illegal well the, the reason why is because the timing of payment think about it if you have a mortgage and um say it's a 30-year note right um which also you know how i do like words or spells and stuff like that well yeah they are because think about what mortgage it's a mortuary everything is water and death literally so you know if you think about your mortgage and you think about like you signed a 30-year mortgage but think about if you're late on one payment you can't really be late on one payment because i signed a 30-year with you so i have 30 years to pay this off you can't necessarily like take my house from me or take my car from me like say if you have um a 15-year note for a car um, that particular, like that was 15, 15 years. So technically they can't, they can't say that you had a late payment or whatever. Cause I technically have 15 years to pay this off, you know? So, um, just keep that in mind, but also like, it's just, it amazes me or it, it intrigues me that all of this comes back to, uh, the SOSVK trust, literally, <laughs> you know, it's like, when it all, when I came across it and it all started to tie together is when I was just, I was shook. I'm like, oh my God, you know, and some people are like, oh my God, Lee, like, you know, this isn't true or you're just making this up. No, I, I didn't get it off of AliExpress. You know, I got it off of Cornell University law. Like this is laws. So most people are not going to look into it. Most people are not going to do their due diligence because they've been taught um, a certain way to do things, you know, like, no, we're supposed to pay our mortgage or, you know, I'll have people in my comments say, why don't you just pay your bills? I'm like, well, they're already paid off. So at that point, if they're already paid off, why am I repaying them? You know, so show me that, show me, show me, show me all that. You know, if you're in a, like, if you go to, um, the car dealership and you get a car, and say say you're sitting there with it right you're sitting there you're so excited because you just got your new ride got your new whip and you know you're you're sitting there let's say just for mathematical purposes because you guys know that i'm i don't i don't math um but if you got the car for let's say fifty thousand dollars and you know you're approved all the things that went to underwriters all the things right and then you went over to financing because they're like, oh my God, you're approved. And you're so excited to be approved by this because you want that whip, right? You want that car. So you're so excited. And then you, um, you know, now you're going over to financing and now you're signing to agree to pay for this whip that was already paid off. Um, <laughs> that's what blows my mind. It's already paid off. And, and our dumbasses are like, oh my God, let's go to financing and let's pay for this. Like, how much are my payments? $600? Fine. You know? No, it's already, it's already paid off. So, um, oh, and happy, happy Friday the 13th, by the way. But, you know, once, 
Oh, that, hold on. You guys know I, I squirrel real bad. Um, so, so then you went over to financing and you got your car, you know, they're like, it's going to be $600 and da, da, you signed up now. Now, how much is your car? Your car is technically a hundred thousand dollars because you paid for it twice. <laughs> you know, that's, what's crazy is we pay for this shit twice. So for mathematical purposes, let's say this. So you bought, you go to the, you pick out, out your house. You're so excited. You're getting this house. You know, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars. And, um, you know, then you go to the underwriter and that kind of stuff. They're going to, you know, actually your mortgage and your promissory note need to stay together, but they separate them. And when they separate them, like you, you end up losing so much money on the back end of that. Um, you know, and then if you miss a payment, good Lord, then they come, you know, we're going to, uh, foreclose on your house or we're going to do this. And it's like, no, you can't because it was already paid. How are, how are you doing any of that? You know, we can't leave money on the table. There's so much that is on the table that we have to claim. And if we don't claim it, then they keep it, literally. Because, like, right now I'm going after the judge's bonds. There's there's a bid bond. There's, like, three or maybe four. I think there's three. Um, there's a performance bond. Like, how well did you do, my guy? Because, essentially, they are admin. They're just, like, an administrator, <laughs> you know? Uh, and but we've been taught that it you know judges are scary and they'll put you away for years and years on end well yeah because like if you get in trouble and and you don't understand the security side of it then your body your actual vessel is going to be the one that pays that charge right it's a charge so if if they don't get that money actual like i mean you can pay in fiat but fiat you can't pay debt with a debt because fiat is a debt. So how are you paying a debt with a debt? But you can make like promissory notes or you can make, you know, your own checks, your own money orders, because essentially you are a bank. You are the bank, right? So if I know that I have securities and I'm coming to the table, like say to get a new car, to get something and I'm coming to the table, my verbiage is going to be different than if I'm on the public side, just there to buy a car. You know, because essentially if I say, hey, I'm here to buy a car, the salesman's going to take me in the back. We're going to sign. My car's going to be paid off. And then I'm going to agree to pay another $50,000 or whatever. Right? No, you have to tender it or even put in like, hey, I want to use a negotiable instrument to be able to get this vehicle. <laughs> you know, so we have to learn to like, um, we have to learn how to talk differently. You know, like even whenever I moved here, here's a story. <laughs> they pissed me off. Ooh, I was cussing. They got me out of character. Um, but when I moved here, um, I hired a moving company. And that was my stomach. Ooh, bitch, eat something. Um, but I, I hired a moving company. They told me originally that my, my total was $1,500 and I understand like billing and lading. So they added on like 500 more dollars, which is fine. Like I understand I'm going across state lines. There's different billing and ladings and that kind of stuff. Like I understand that too. Well, I get down here. No, no back up. They come to my house in Locust Grove and the guy was like, we're not going to be able to get your stuff unless, um, you pay $5,500. What? We didn't agree to that. Your breach of contract, sir. No, but see, I didn't know anything about contracts then and I didn't understand any of that. So whenever I was coming back at them, I ended up going over the heads and I'm like, no, I'm not paying this, not doing that. So I did pay it and then they brought all my shit here. Actually, I drove down, got here and then the guys showed up and was like, oh, it's gonna be $2,300 or I can't give you your stuff back. And I'm like, oh, so hostage, you're keeping my stuff, you're holding it hostage. But then also, it's blackmail because you're telling me that you're not going to give me my belongings until I pay you, right? So I went ahead and paid all the things because at this point on the back end, I'll fight it on the back end because these people are doing their job. It was a secondary company that came in that brought me my stuff. So on the back end of that, I talked to some lady named Heather and told her, I was like, no, this is total breach of contract. And... You know, I realized that you guys are a broker. So even when you guys are a broker, like, are you trading my stuff on the first and secondary 
market because that's what brokers do like you have my name you have my social you know you have my banking account all my stuff which then once I got here I had to change my banking account and all the, it was just it was a mess but I wouldn't have been able to get out of that hole had I not started to learn contract law because when I was talking to Heather I started rattling off stuff like that and she was like, uh, 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 hold on, I'm going to have to get, you know, let me put you on hold. And I'm like, yeah, put me on hold. I know what I'm talking about. Like, you're you're about to, to be sued, my guy. Real bad. So, hold on, hold on. But I'm down here now. Got all my stuff. Got all my money back. Not doing that with y'all. <laughs> And I don't typically give like bad reviews, but it wasn't a bad review. It was just kind of like, hey, you guys are fucking people over, you know, adding on other other things to my contract. When I already signed the contract in the beginning, you can't recontract without without me. And you're trying to recontract. And and so I got my money back. <laughs> But learning contract law, I'm, I actually got my things back from um, the W4 sandwiches that I, that I did back in May. So those sandwiches consisted of identity theft, um, you know, using my social, trading my stuff. I, I, I audited a lot of people though. Well, it was eight people. It's a lot for me because a lot of people in the group have audited like 20, 30 people and it's literally everybody that has used your social. So I audited like DMVs, um, the hospital that I was born in. I audited, um, well, I used to be regional manager for Victoria's Secret when it was in Macon, when it was at like the Macon Mall. And so I was that, so they have all of my, my information. And then also I had the Victoria's Secret like angel card. And so they had that. So I audited them. Now, it, t it does take a little bit of time, but now I ended up getting my stuff back from them. You know, one of the forms is 8888. It's eight. It's four eights. Um, and that is the form for um, my information. It's the accounting side in case, like, if they do find something, then they'll be able to pay me. The 1040 V is also um, another. It's a it's a it's a form on the IRS that you can use to pay them, right? So if you're contracting, I don't. Mm, I guess it is contracting with the IRS, and you're saying, "Hey, I feel like, you know, I'm a victim of identity theft, or I feel like, you know, people have used my social in the wrong manner." Um, you're approaching the IRS saying that I want you guys to audit this particular company. Well, they did. So now I'm starting to see stuff back from them now. So that was May, May, June, July, August, September, October. So about six months, you know, you're going to have to wait a little bit. They're not, they're not quick. <laughs> it's the IRS. I mean, if you owe them money, then they're quick. But let me tell you this. I was on the phone with uh, Mr. Higby from the IRS and um, asking a bunch of questions and they said that, or he said that if you owe taxes or anything like that, the IRS doesn't actually come after you. Like they, they can't, you can't get in trouble for that because 31 USC 321 says that taxes are a gift to Washington. So if you owe taxes, it's not, it's not the IRS that's actually coming after you. It's a secondary company, which is like, the state, um, you know, the police enforcement, that kind of like, I say police enforcement, they're only policy enforcers, which I'm not taking from you if you're spouse or whatever, if you're a cop or whatever, I, I, if anything, you need to teach them or learn that it's just a policy enforcer. You guys go around and, and, and you're like hall hallway monitors. Don't run, <laughs> don't speed. You know, don't come around that corner too quick. They're just, that's what they are. Again, not taking from them. Don't bash me. You know, but that's, hold on. In our mind, we were taught that, you know, 
we were taught something totally different and that's not what it is. And it just irks me because like once you learn this and then even whenever you're on TikTok and you start to see like where these people are saying, hey, like I'm a sovereign citizen or hey, I, you know, I have rights. I'm not driving. I'm traveling. Only people that can drive is like Uber or um, I was going to say U-Haul. Anything that has to do with commerce is is driving but if you're driving and you're not an uber or you're not delivering pizza or you're not you know anything like that then you're just traveling you know and these people come up and need your driver's license registration you know and it's like i don't have to have a driver's license i'm not driving i'm traveling there's a huge difference huge difference but these police officers these policy enforcers don't know that and then they're ripping people out of cars Sometimes I think it's an ego trip. Like it's almost like the little boy when it, you know, was broken and then got into the police force and now he takes all of his anger out on like civilians, which the word civilians literally means slave. It means monster. So no, I don't want to be a civilian. I want to be a sovereign. Cuz think about it. Whenever you were born, if you look at your birth certificate, you'll notice that there is one date that you were born right so i was born on 10 24 73 i'm old yes i'll be 50 this year and then there's another date that's on there which is 10 26 1973 is when they logged me into the corporation fun right so on the 26th is when i became a slave so when the media is saying oh my god like you guys you know black against white and you know all the things they want to keep us divided so that we don't rise. They want to keep us divided so that we stay stupid. When technically we're all slaves. And if you want to go even deeper, if you look into the Cabbage Patch doll theory, those Cabbage Patch dolls actually have like a backstory to them. That backstory is there was white little baby kids on a train like plucked from their family, little orphan train. What is it called? A yingling? not yingling. What's that word? I don't know what that word is, but it's, it's, it's all the little baby slaves that then were brought up through the system and then now became workers, you know, and they were white. They were little white kids. So if you had, like I had a cabbage patch doll, not the ones with the plastic head. I'm talking about the ones with the cloth heads. That is, that's yingling. That's not the word. Yingling? I feel like yingling is an alcohol. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't drink that. But yeah, so all of those were brought over. So can you can we really say that we weren't actually slaves too? I feel like we were too. I mean, obviously not me and like my generation, but before that, a lot of these kids came over here on trains, homeless parentless like little orphan people and then they wanted to make something cute out of it so you bought little fabric baby head and it came with a birth certificate you know so it just it all makes sense to me and it all just like it blows my mind because we've been indoctrinated we you know i had the little baby doll you know i i was told that oh this is cute and this little you know so if you ever go to um, let's even say, what is it? The Cabbage Patch factory? Isn't there like a factory or something like that? Yeah, they're mocking it. They're making it into something just like Disney. They're making it into something that is less harsh, you know, to wrap your brain around. Oh my gosh, look how cute little babies, you know. Meanwhile, the backstory says that, you know, these are actually um, orphan or orphans little little white orphans so everybody's like oh we're you know you guys have white privilege and that kind of stuff and i'm like uh we were all slaves at one point and if, even if we go back from that slave mentality <sighs> the black people were here in america first like the we fucked that up for them and then all of a sudden like the the government tried to put their strong arm, their strong white arm, in there and make it, they're, it's just, they're dividing us. 
you know, and I totally get it. Like that works for them because think about it. If we sit there and fight, then we don't, we don't see the bigger picture. We don't see that, it, you know, like this is actually their land and George Washington was actually black. And you know, like you're like, oh my God, like I've really been lied to this whole time. Yeah, you have, you know, and I feel like whenever some of the white people that are so racist and so like black people are underneath me or, you know, just, I would never have my daughter date a black man, dumb shit like that. That drives me insane. I'm just like, you guys, like you do, they, they don't understand history, you know? So, and it's been backwards. Like everybody's been lied to all of us, not, not just the white people, not just the black people. It's all of us. We've all been lied to, you know? And then they put in, in this, you know, obviously, like I grew up thinking that, you know, a mortgage is a 30 year note and you got to pay it. And it's based off of this and da, 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 da. But then I came across this and I'm like, holy shit, all of our stuff's already paid off. You know, all of our, all of our bills and everything, like even, even the way that you would tender something is totally different. There's a, there's a difference in the sides, right? So you're going to have a public side and then you're going to have a private side. Well, before I moved here, I went to Ameris. Where, where was that? That was in McDonough. And I spoke to a lady that was there. Her name is Jeannie. And she was on the private side, but now she's on the public side because I was looking for the medallion stamp. Or, you know, like the big, it's like a stamp. It's not like a sticker stamp. And um, I was asking about that. And she even said to me, because I, I said, well, I came in here the other day. I was sitting at her desk. And I pointed to the, um, the office next to me and I said, well, she said that you guys didn't have that stamp. And she was like, no, she doesn't have that stamp, which indicated to me that that's the public side. The public side doesn't have any of that. The public side doesn't understand about the remittance coupons and how to endorse with your Syntex signature. They don't understand that. I was on the public side. I didn't understand that. The first time when I started to hear this, I was like, wait, <laughs> wait a goddamn minute, you know, but now I'm like, holy shit, it's true, you know, and only she could do that because she's on the, the private side. Yeah. So when you learn how to, to like even do private banking, like I got my private bankers EIN number the other night and it just made me happy because like I've sent all my stuff in. Um, I, I've authenticated my birth certificate and my, my stuff's up at a federal level right now. And I'm waiting for my birth certificate to come back. But um, that'll give me good or uh, full faith and credit. That's full faith and credit. That now whenever I approach a bank, I can say, hey, like I have my securities. And I have, you know, full faith and credit. And I have my banker's EIN. And I have my foreign um, banker's trust. You know, that way I don't have to just stay within the States. I can actually do business outside the States too. So, which is good because then I think it, it maybe, maybe this is just my little rabbit hole brain. I think that once you get that, cause I got, I didn't get Dinar, but I did get Zim from Zimbabwe. And then I got Dong from Vietnam. I got those two currencies. So I'm wondering, like, can I trade that? Like, once once the level playing field, like, bah, bah, you know, can, and and that currency actually goes up, can I use that? Like, can I? Can I? How can I double that? You know. So all of these processes, they do take a while. You know, if you're doing a live life claim or anything like that, the live life claim is really easy to do, honestly. Um, that's that's printing off. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's printing off um, the form and filling it out. It has three little areas that ask for like a picture of you, your thumbprint, and like a hair, like DNA. I'm not putting blood. I'm not doing that. I'm not piercing my skin for that. But I will give a hair. Um, you know, and then what you do with it is you certify mail it to you and it'll come back to you. So you have a copy and then you have this, um, the same, same, same letter in a sealed envelope. So that's your live life claim. You're saying, Hey, I'm, I'm alive. I'm alive. And I want to be able to access all of this and, and have the things that I need to have quickly because 
I've been doing the remittance coupons and that's been taking a while because these CEOs are playing games and it really just <laughs> makes them want to burn their house down, honestly. But, um, you know, I've been, I sent all my stuff off. I, I sent all my stuff off. I've been in good faith. Um, the other day when I was on the phone with the IRS for three hours, Mr. Higby, um, he actually, he was in my account and he said, he said something about the humanitarian. He was like, well, why did, you know, your account says humanitarian. I was like, <laughs> it does. Is it because I'm a Scorpio? Because they're humanitarian, you know? Or is it because whenever I started this journey, I wrote them a handwritten cursive letter on actual like school paper. And I talked about like Jasara and Nasara. And I talked about like all this cool stuff that's happening and everything that's, you know, going on currently. And, um,. I said that I want to use this money for my humanitarian project. And this is what I, 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 I love that the white hats and the Patriots are in control and God wins. Like it was like I was writing a pen pal, <laughs> but did they, did they notice that and like indicate that in my, my account, you know, like my file, I would think so. <laughs> Because nobody else, everybody in the group that has, like, done that, I don't know if they have humanitarian in theirs. But I hope that my, my account gets flagged and, like, hey, she wants to do this. Because, like, now that I'm single, I don't have people that dictate my life anymore. Praise baby Jesus in a small manger because that motherfucker was preemie. <laughs> you know, like, mm. I don't, I, I can get up at any time that I want to. I can, you know, it's just, it's an amazing life. <laughs> no stress. You know, how do we turn this on? So it's, it's squaring away your life. It's, you know, realizing, realizing the things that are, are factual and then also starting to get your own accounts and everything because essentially all of my accounts are listed underneath my social, but I don't want to work out of my social anymore because that's the straw man. That's the name with the all caps name, right? That's the fake entity. I don't want to use that social, right? I'd rather use my 98 number or, um, my like other EINs because what you're doing is you're creating the trust and you're putting everything into the trust. Your, your car, your securities, your house, your birth certificate, your kid's birth certificates. Um, I did not put my kid's birth certificate in there for several reasons. One for, well, considering that they're already adults, you know, I did add them as beneficiaries because once I croak, um, I would hope that like they would do right by me. <laughs> I'll say they haven't. Um, but I would hope that at that point in time, um, that all is well and, you know, they have noticed the error in their ways. <laughs> you know, like shit. But even doing that, that's, that's real easy too. That's so easy. Um, that is going on Law Depot, D-E-P-O-T. -E yeah, it's like Home Depot. And you create your trust. You want a trust that is revocable. So you want to be able to change it. You don't want an irrevocable trust. You can have one, but you're not going to be able to change it. You know, maybe that's something where, like, if you're putting together one for your family and your family's a little toxic... You know, you may do it that way to where it's like they can't change anything. They have to do whatever's in the will or they don't they don't get the, the bag. Um, you know, but do a revocable living trust. Set it up. You're going to get your EIN number. Work out of that. Everything, all of my bills, that's what I'm working on, is um, I'm working on putting everything underneath that EIN number now. You know, so I'm having to change things, which requires a form. And then you got to fill it out. And it, it's just, it, y'all, it's so much. But if anything, during this time, like I knew once I got divorced, I was like, 
I don't, I'll be damned if I jumped it back into another relationship. That That's so toxic, weak mindset to me to like get out of a 12-year relationship and then all of a sudden be back in another relationship. Like, what do you bring to the table, my guy? You know? No, thank you. So in that time, I've been studying. I've studied since my divorce. And I've lost a lot of people because people are like, no, that's not it. Or, Lee, you're crazy. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Call me crazy. Um, I, I just went to Walmart the other day and got some tinfoil because I really want to make a hat. <laughs> I really do, but I have to think about, like, how do I make it? You know, do I just make, like, it looks like a beanie where it's just on my head? Or do I have it, like, you know, to, do I add rhinestones? Like, how, how bougie do we get with this? Because she's going to wear that. You know? And then even, like, go to a Halloween party. Wait. Why do they put... I don't understand. Um, go to a Halloween party and dress as a tinfoil hat. Like, that would be my ass. But uh, you're, you're creating your trust to put everything in the trust and then you're living out of the trust. And they can't, the, the government can't do anything to take it from you. Like I just posted a video about the alloidal allo allo title. If you have alloidal, A-L-O-I-T-A-L, alloidal, um, once you get that, nobody can touch it. You know, not even Jesus. The government cannot touch it. So think about Trump. He has all this stuff. I'm sure he has a alloidal titles for everything. You know, they, they can't, even, even while he's in court right now, I noticed that his trust is listed. Well, they, they can try. They can try to get into that, but they're not going to be able to get into that and like take anything from him. He's not, he's not stupid, you know. Why? Like, what is going on? So, your your goal is to create the trust and put everything in it that is of value. You know, everything, literally. Your house, your, your car, even if it's a piece of shit car, please put it in there. You know, I was talking to a friend the other day and she's like, well, what all do I put in? And I'm like, think about everything that you own. You're putting it in a box right? That box is your trust. That box is what houses all of your things, you know, all of, all of your assets, your securities, your everything, all because, I swear to God, because you don't want it to be taken from you or removed or, you know, like you're in foreclosure. If you have an alloidal title, they can't even foreclose on you. Because you own that. You've already claimed it. You guys were leaving a lot of things on the table. You know, and that includes, like, judges' bonds and stuff like that. That's why I'm going after the judge right now in Henry County. <laughs> Try my hand. I've always wanted to be an attorney. I really have. But I don't, I, I don't even know where the comma goes. And my grammar is horrible. So I feel like I would have failed that. But I love law. I love it. Case law, things like that. Makes me excited. But don't leave things on the table anymore. Like even now, since I moved here, um, I started this process back in May. And um, what I did was I contacted the um, underwriters. Like I contacted the bigger company. I'm not going to ever contact... People that are on a local level, they don't know. They're peasants like we are. You know, they're just there to do, do their job. They do a great job. Tammy does a great job, right? But that's all she knows. All she knows is how she's going to get up into, you know, the next, you know, the next, like, placement, the next division, or the next, you know, um, I was going to say like employee, like, like she's moving up the channels, you know, maybe she starts out on the floor and then now she's a teller and then maybe she's, uh, you know, a, a bank manager, you know, that's what her focus is because she wants to keep getting raises and uh, eventually retire, right? That That's what we were taught to do. Well, she doesn't understand any of this. So, God, I'm struggling. So, you know. 
she's not going to know. But people on the higher end, people that are probably have already signed NDAs and stuff like that, you know, they're going to know it. So that's who I'm going to contact. So I wrote my cover letter to them, um, the home office. What is this thing keeps turning off. This is why I hate, like, why do they put the buttons right here? Like, why isn't it the button like way down here or something like that? Because you, you guys see my struggle. Maybe I'm pulling it out of the wall. Um, but you're gonna, what I did was go over the, the heads and I wrote a promissory note to them saying, hey, I love the area. I'm moving down there at the end of September. I, you know, I love your layout of the plan. I had to gas them up a little bit. And, um, you know, I want to go ahead and use securities uh, to finalize this, you know, contract and da, da 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 Well, they didn't respond to me. So if you don't respond to me, that's acquiescence. So you essentially did respond to me, but you just didn't respond to me. So now that I'm here, now I can go back to the same people because what I'm doing is I'm building my case, right? Because if it has to go to court, I need to be able to tell Mr. Admin Man, Mr. Judge, that, hey, I've already contacted these people back in May, so um, and they did not respond to me. So now, like, I've, I've contacted them again, which I have not, but this is, this is what I'm going to do. That was what I would say to the judge if I had to go to the judge. And then I would get his bonds on the back end. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Um, so at this point, I've already put them on notice in May. I'm already down here. So now I have to write another letter indicating that, hey, I'm down here. I have signed your lease with my social, which I really didn't want to do, but that's okay. Um, and I want to go ahead and um, tender this properly. And then I would throw a cease and desist. Don't contact me anymore. There's no reason to. My stuff's already paid off. You don't have to contact me anymore. You know, you already got the money for my um, apartment. My apartment's already paid for. You know, so it's, it's, you guys, I talk about this as if you are divorcing the government. That, it, literally, that's what you're doing. Because think about it, they're toxic as hell. They've lied to you since day one. They've made you jump through hoops trying to make sure that you're, you know, staying within their guidelines. That's toxic as hell. That's a toxic relationship that you're having with the, this governmental um, institution. So even with that, now, now you got to go back and ask for all your stuff. What? Ask for all your stuff back. All of it. I want all of it. I want all of my proceeds. I want all of my interest paid in because that's what I'm doing with Ford Credit now too. Um, I'm on my last time, my third time to cure. I, I addressed the legal department and the girl that I, ha I was already talking to. And she actually told me that Ford Credit doesn't have to abide by USC codes. And I'm like, <laughs> you're going to lose your job. <laughs> because, <laughs> like, do you know that this, why? I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. This is what we get, people. All right. Hmm. <laughs> But she told me that they didn't have to abide by that. I was like, all right, well, that's going to be your last day there. But, um, you know, they're going to fuck with you. They're going to tell you that because they want you to just jump off and be like, okay, well, they told me that they couldn't, you know, that they don't have to abide by those laws. But yes, you do. But yes, they do. Even your mortgage company. When you had your mortgage company, that's one contract. Then you refinance. Now you got two contracts out there. Both of these are on the market being traded. There's proceeds and interest flying all over this thing. Meanwhile, you're going to a job that you fucking hate. And you're paying on a mortgage that was already paid off. And, and they're, they're securitizing your contracts. So, ooh. Once you figure that out, then you're like, okay, <laughs> how do I, what do I have to do to get all of this back? What do I have to do? And that's literally just signing, like coming up with um, your instruction letter or coming up with um, a presentment letter saying, hey, this is, I, I realize this now. This is what I did with Ford Credit. I told them that I understand now what consumer law and what contract law is. And I understand that 
what happened when I sat down and signed, because my name is first on my um, application, on the, on the credit, um, and now I understand that. So now I want all of that back. Now I would like to go ahead and like say, hey, gigs up, like I want that back. What you're gonna do is you're gonna ask for the original note, which is gonna be where you sat down with Fred and financing and you signed your name, wet, wet signature, bah, 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 right? You want that back. Well, think about it. If I've already paid off my car and it's been say, say six years that I paid it off, um, that note, that contract has already been traded countless times. So think about all the proceeds that are on there or think about how much interest is in there. And when I say interest, I'm talking about things that are paid in. Think about how much money I paid in. Um, I want all of that back because now I understand that you are fraud. Now I understand that this contract is deceptive. Now I understand that you, my insurance was supposed to be in my contract, part of the sum of all charges. I understand that now. So now that the gig is up, I want you to go ahead and like, let's make this right. Right now, typically they're going to push back. They're not going to want to make anything right with you. They don't want to do that because they know that they can get sued. So they're going to push back or, you know, Fred and financing is going to say, no, like, you know, th this is just your contract and that guy. No, I, I totally get my contract. What I want from you, Fred, is I want that original contract that had my wet signature on it. I signed, ba 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 ba, right? Because on the flip side of that, not only did the salesman, um, you know, Sam the salesman sign, but I signed and my ex signed as co-signer underneath me. That's three signatures. That means that is securitized. That's a bond. Two signatures is um, a contract. It's like one is kind of like a promissory, like you're like if I were to go to the bank and I would say, hey, like I want $500,000 from my SESTIK trust, that would mean that I'm giving them a promissory note to make that right. If I do two, then it's a contract. If I do three, then three is actually a bond. So now that this is three signatures on this Ford application, then I would like you to give me, <laughs> I would like you to give me my original contract with my wet signature, which they're not gonna be able to do. So, <laughs> you know, I'm putting together the pieces of the puzzle in paper form so that if I do have to go to court, then I can go judge, look, I realized this, I did this, I did this. You know, Fred and finance lied to me, deceptive forms. It's been traded on the stock market on the first and secondary market, so I would like those back too. Or we can recontract, and then if I recontract with them, which is fine, because at this point it's out of hand, right? Then I want to get 80% of those proceeds, like, dude, go ahead, keep keep trading it, keep trading it. But what I want from you now is 80% and you can have 20% of that. Go ahead, keep trading it. Which would then, now you're having dividends come to your house monthly. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut recontract because you fucked up back in 2014 when I signed. Because I'm sure by 2015, that contract was all over the stock market. Completely. So I want all of that back. Thanks. And then the, the, the judge, look at this, none. Then the judge is going to be like, <laughs> give her back her shit. So it's contract law, y'all. It really is. And even, even when you realize like your name in it and the all caps name, that's that's your straw man. That's that legal fiction that was created by the government, which is the slave, right? Because because if you look at your birth certificate or you look at your social, even on my Ford Ford application, my name is in all caps. So that person that the government created is actually obligated to that debt. Not me. Not me. I'm not that name. I'm not that name. You made me that name. You put my name in all capital letters. Not me. I'm not required to pay that debt. You pay that debt. <laughs> I want my money back. Thanks for playing. Like, that was fun to think about, but I want my money back. And when you get that back, then there you go. Go through all of your contracts. 
like I said earlier, the, the insurance, your car insurance should be in the sum of all charges. It's supposed to be part of your car contract, literally. It's not supposed to be an outside entity. And I tried to talk to um, the girl that, I don't know, what is she, my agent for my insurance? I tried to tell her, but again, no fault to her, but she's indoctrinated. She was taught how to do this, how to do the policies, all the things, does a great job, great job. She's trying to move up the channels, you know, all the things. But on the back side of that, she doesn't understand this. She doesn't understand that when I signed my final contract to get my Ford with Legacy, Legacy Ford to get my Mustang, she didn't understand that the insurance is actually supposed to be in the sum of all charges, right? And if you look at that contract, the only thing that you should have paid was the financing, the financing charge, literally. So that could be like $2,000, why? because your card was already paid off. So to be able to run those processes through Legacy Ford, I think it cost me like financing charges and all the things, I think it was like two grand. That's what I should have paid and then drove off the lot. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But it's just learning it. It's just learning it. Create your paper trail. You know, if you're, if you're beefing with the mortgage company, then stay on it. Give them three times to cure. If they don't, during that time, you have already created a paper trail. Now you got to go to arbitration, which is fine because bigger companies like Ford Credit are not going to want to go to court. They don't care. I'm a peasant. Who am I in the big scheme of things, in the big scheme of Ford? Who am I? If anything, whoever's over that would be like, get this bitch out. Give her her money back. Give her her money back. That's it. And then you win. <laughs> you know, it's that it's it's literally that easy. But you have to start a paper trail. Just like if you're in a toxic relationship, you have to start logging some of the the like things that that person's being deceptive with. You know, are they lying to you? Are they cheating on you? Are they you know doing things behind your back? You're gonna have to keep log of that so that whenever you go and hire your attorney, you can go look. I got exhibits. <laughs> I got proof. I got receipts. I need you to look at this. Same thing with your mortgage. Same thing with your car notes. Same thing if you're leasing an apartment. And it blows my mind because think about it. Like even this building, this building has been here for a while, right? Think about how many people have came through here and paid their rent. But their rent's already paid for. So it makes me like, damn, like I want to own an apartment complex, you know? Because then think about it. It's already paid off. But then, you know, like the, the residents, me, I'm sitting here paying it again. So let's say that my rent's two grand. My Sestake trust is already paying off like monthly, even, even my electric, even, you know, gas. I don't, I don't think I have gas. I think it is just electric, but you know, utilities, it's already paid off. But then I'm over here paying Florida power and light. Um, and then I'm paying my rent everything's already paid off. Why am I paying that? You know, think about all the uh, uh, landlords making hand over fist because we just don't know. You know, like think about even Section 8, those little shitty like long houses. It looks like like, sh uh, like almost like a strip mall, but it's it's houses. And like they're getting money out of their Sestake trust. If you guys are even on food stamps or you're getting any sort of assistance, um, papas, the greeters that are at Walmart and say hi to you all day, they, Walmart has already tapped into their Sestake trust. And then they're breadcrumbing them with like, well, I'm going to pay you $13, okay, Papa? And Papa's are like, yes, I'll do that. You know, hey, y'all, welcome in. <laughs> you know, so they're getting paid from their own Sestake trust. You know, even think about veterans. Veterans, all, all the people that are like military, they're getting paid from their trust. The government don't have no money. The bank don't have no money. Where's that money coming from? It's coming from your trust. So if you are on food stamps or anything like that, do it, renegotiate with them, give them another um, negotiable instrument and tell them, no, I want the max because I know where this is coming from. It's coming from my trust. It ain't even coming from you. Sit down, Sylvia. 
Like, it, you're getting paid regardless. And Sylvia is actually getting paid from her, like, the caseworker, getting paid out of her SESTIK trust to sit down. No, I know what this is. I want all of it. I want the max that I can get for that month. Food stamps? Sure. Assistance? Sure. Sex and, Section 8 housing? All of that. Veterans? Everything. You're getting paid yourself. If you work at Ulta or say you work at Home Depot, you're getting paid out of your SESTIK trust. You're working for your own money. Fuck that. Just go ahead and get access to that and be like, <laughs> not doing that with y'all. <laughs> that was fun to think about. You know? Crazy. But we don't know. And I think that that's actually going to level the playing field. It's a good time to be alive, y'all. I'm not watching any of these comments. Hey, Jerry. I've been in so many. Hey, Megan. Bling it up, girl, Megan. Yes, I, I really do. I love you, Megan. I miss you guys so bad. Beanie. Yeah, I thought about doing kind of like a witch hat that kind of does like a little, you know, because I'm witchy. But, you know, it has a little point and then like stone the outside of it. <laughs> so, because I'm going to wear it probably in my next video. Um, I have to start back on my lives, um, be a little bit more due diligent on the lives because it's been like a month since I've posted anything on my YouTube channel and I have so much to tell you guys like my I don't even know where to start with you guys at this point because like the last month I for, when I was starting to move here I had to take off like a two week um like because everything was packed. My printer was packed. All my papers, everything was already packed. So it was like, I, I'm just sitting there like, okay, I have nothing to do. I don't know what to, you know, I don't know what to study anymore. And then once I got here, that was the first thing that I put together was my desk. <laughs> Shocker. Um, and then I started right back on it. So it, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it does take time. Like when you get your private, private banker's EIN, the 98 number, like, that, that scared me. There's a lot of, there's a, a lot of people that don't get it because they kind of mess up their wording and they, they, they'll hang up on you. If you, if you sound any sort of sneaky snake, they will hang up on you. Yeah. Cause they did that to me. <laughs> you know, it's like, what the hell? But you know, it's just, you guys learn at the, the level that you learn. And I'll tell you guys real quick, I'm dyslexic. I, I don't read well. I don't know where the comma goes. I love run-on sentences. Obviously, like, bitch, breathe. Like, I'll just keep talking. You know? But, hey, Deborah. But, you know, it's just, it all goes back to contract law. Study contract law. Everything that, every day that you leave your house. It, it, I mean, I guess you could even in your house, but you're, you're getting in a contract. Like when you go through a uh, Chick-fil-A, that's a contract. You're contracting with them. You're saying, Hey, I'm going to give you this. If you give me my waffle fr fries, you know, that that's a contract. Same, same. Whenever you go to like a dealership, you're coming in saying, Hey, I, here's my promissory note. I will pay you. And, um, then you get the car. Now, somebody in our group had asked, like, how would you do that? Like, our, there are several ways to do that. Number one, you could do it through the private banking side where you don't, you just basically go pick out your car. Then you go over to the bank and you're like, hey, this is what I want. This is, you know, I'm, I'm doing this promissory note for you because I understand that you're going to get it out of my trust anyway. So I want to totally skip over f financing because I don't, I don't need that. I have so many securities, but then... Um, you can also do it where you do go through the public side, but then you file a 1099C to cancel it. Because think about it, whenever you go, you're so excited to get this new car and you're like, hell yeah, like fuck the payment, but hell yeah, you know? And then they have you sign and you sign it and then they're like, you know what? We're gonna give you a month free. Well, we're so excited, we're like, hell yeah, a month free. I can keep that money, I can do it over here. Da -da -da. No, the reason why they do that is because they have 21 days or you have 21 days that you can either accept the contract or you can cancel it. So if you do a 1099C and you cancel it, then it's like you cancel your financing side. You don't have to, to do the financing side because you can't pay debt with a debt anyway. 
But you can come over here and go, okay, well, I'm going to file a 1099-C with that, and I'm going to cancel the debt out completely. Voila. You know, um, down payments, they're illegal. Installments, illegal. Late payments, illegal. Repos, illegal. I've got USC codes for all of that. And it makes sense, too, because if everything is already paid, then there shouldn't be a late payment. If everything is already paid, then you shouldn't want to come and get my car and repo it. If everything is already, you know what I'm saying? Like, it makes sense as to the SESTIK trust. Because HJR 192 says the same thing. 18 USC 8, which is actually criminal. Anything 18 is going to be criminal. 18 USC 8 also says that all bills are prepaid. Obligated by the government. You know, so when we realize that, when we go into these organizations, these financial institutions, because it, even whenever you went into um, the, the dealership, Every single one of those cars that you're like, oh, they're so pretty, you know, they're all paid for. They're, it's, it's considered abandoned property. They're all paid for. So now you come in and you're like, oh, well, I want that one. And I'm going to pay $50,000 for it, although it's abandoned property and it's already been paid for. Do you get that? So create your world, whenever I t start talking about spirituality stuff or I start talking about like my witchcraft and whatever, when you are creating your own world, you're manifesting what you want in it. You just have to know how to create it and then enforce it. So I'm back and forth right now with Ford Credit and it's the last, I'm, a, I'm on my third time to cure. So at this point, I am going to have to file something with the courthouse to indicate that I'm in arbitration because my car's already paid off and I do want that interest and the down payment and all that back. Like I said earlier, if you guys look at your contract, the only thing, the only thing that you guys should have been paying for is the finance charges. That's it. So if it's like two grand, you should have paid the two grand and whipped. That's it. But you got sucked into a contract thinking that, oh, I got to pay $50,000 now. No, you really don't. They suckered you. And then you went on the outside of it and you got insurance. They suckered you again. Because that was supposed to be in the sum of all charges. Do you follow that? It's crazy. These rabbit holes are crazy. But on the flip side of it, it's like, it makes sense. It makes sense as to why, like, Trump is trying to dismantle this. Or it makes sense as to why these rabbit holes go so deep. Trump has been telling us this this whole time. Trump has been talking to us, dropping little breadcrumbs, dropping little seeds that the level level the playing field. Now, if you go into like a common sense brain, what would be leveling the playing field? How would you do such a thing? It's because we're all millionaires. We're all millionaires. Everybody that has a social and a birth certificate, that's how you access that. So, and it's and it's a contract. Because think about it, I was a little baby before they registered me with the corporation. What is the corporation? It's the United States. It's a corporation. Who is the president of this corporation? Biden. It's, like, it's almost like going to, let's say, um, I don't know why this came to my brain, Sears. Who is the president of Sears, right? It'd be that guy. Let's say that it's Biden. Biden is the, the president of the corporation. Then you're going to have like a tree of people. Then you have these people. Then you have what? Co head of customer service would be what? Pelosi? You know, then you have all these other people. Then maybe you have a person in that particular department. Say it's automotive. Maybe you have, you know, Adam in automotive. That would be, you know, considered like your governors of each little department, right? It's just a business. It's not who we are as a, as a country. So this whole time, Trump's been trying to dismantle Sears. You know, like we don't need these these department heads, which is like think of the department being the state. So we don't we don't need that. We don't we don't need the speaker of the house. We don't need you know because you guys they're making their own decisions and they're not even based off of what we want or our integrity, like what we want as a country. That's why other countries make fun of us so bad. You know, we don't even know. We got we got Biden head of Sears Corporation, and you can tell because even the flags, like if you see the flag and it has like a, a fringe at the bottom of it, that indicates that they're that's the corporation. 
but you have to know these kind of things to be able to see these kind of things. You know, when you're watching Biden talk or anything like that, look around. Even look at the top. Look at what kind of eagle is at the top of this. Is his wings down or is his wings up? There's a difference. Look here on the, on the flag if there's fringe. Is there a fringe or is there not a fringe? When we became a corporation is when we got the fringe, <laughs> you know? So those things are just, they're huge to be able, when you're watching certain, like even the media play out, you know, and they're doing this kind of stuff or they're doing this kind of stuff, you know, they're doing certain symbolism will be their downfall. Symbolism, you know, all this stuff will be their downfall. Look at what they're doing. Then go down to the celebrities. So again, think of Sears. You have, you know, Biden. Then you have your people, you know, like the, the what would we call them? Um, you'd have a president. You may have like a vice president of Sears. You may have like, um, I don't know how that works. Hold on. Like all the, like you just have levels, right? Then you get down to even like the governors and then you have the mayors and it goes, the corruption goes really deep. So if you know mayors, of certain like cities and stuff like that, you bet your ass that they know about the sex trafficking and you bet your ass that they know who is part running the sex trafficking, right? You, you would have to, you're the mayor, you know, because then you have the sheriff, which probably also knows who the kingpins are that are doing this kind of shit. So all of that is going to be dismantled. Um, if you know a banker, if you know a person that like owns a bank or like they're the head honcho at the bank, they're going down too because they have been running a, a corporation, a, a little entity, a side entity fraudulently. You know, when I was talking to a friend the other day about the FDIC, if you guys, if there's a bank that has, that is FDIC insured, we are supposed to be getting $250,000 quarterly simmer there. <laughs> we are supposed to be getting $250,000 quarterly. Why? How? Because we opened a, a bank account with our name, our social, right? Name social. All we need is the social to get into the securities because that's part of the treasury, right? When you opened that account, they were able to trade your shit. So if you're going to trade my stuff, then go ahead and give me $250,000. $250,000 quarterly every three months. Go ahead. I shouldn't even have to give you any information because you know my name, you know my address. You, you took my, my driver's license, so you pretty much have all the information that you need. So if anything, go back to the, the bank and recontract with them. I want 80% of it. I know you've already like sneaky snaked my account. I want 80% off of that and you can... I don't know who that was. We'll call them back. But... You know, I mean, that's that's just, you have to learn this kind of stuff. You have to understand who you're dealing with. These people, oh, these people, even the bankers, like I, I, I don't want to say they're friends because they're not, but I know people that's husbands is like head honcho of certain banks. And I'm like, <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be held really, really hard accountable. One of them's down at Eastman. His wife's a, a C-U-N-T. So bad a C-U-N-T. But you know what? Husband's going to be held accountable because he knows, you know? So when you see these people in these small towns where it's like the husband's a banker and they live in this sprawling ass house and their kids have like BMWs and you're like, oh shit, they're getting Y'all stay with me. He understands the playbook. He understands that they're supposed to be getting 250 out of that. He understands that, you know, negotiable instruments, because right now, even if I went into that bank with a negotiable instrument, he would have to take it. It's a promissory note. So again, if you see these people that are like head of banks or whatever, and they're living in sprawlings and they're just all doing all the things, going on lavish vacations, you bet your ass he knows how to do that. We just don't know how to do that because we're peasants. We, we, we didn't teach, we, we weren't taught that. So he probably started out as a teller. Then maybe he worked his way up to like branch manager. Then he worked his way up, you know, like as you get up into the different like levels is when you're going to have different knowledge too. So when you see these people that are doing that, they understand that private side. He understands that private side. He owns the bank. 
down at Eastman, if you guys know. He's going to end up going down. He's going to be held accountable. That bank will have to totally switch because think about it. Once Jassar and Nassar rolls out and even the QFS system, these particular banks are going to like have to be restructured. We're not going to do our banking the same way. We're going to have to be taught how to do a promissory note or something to be able to come into the bank and go, hey, here's my promissory note. I know where you get the money. You get the money from the Federal Reserve, right? On the back of my social has a red number with a letter in front of it. That letter actually is correlated with that particular uh, Federal Reserve. Think of the Hunger Games, right? We all have districts that we are part of. My, I'm, I, was, I was born in Georgia. The letter on the back of my social, social is an H, so I'm assigned to um, St. Louis. So all of my funds are in St. Louis, you know? So again, once the banks start to crumble and even the bankers, they're going to be held accountable because it's sneaky snake deception shit. And they're going to have to be reformatted so that like we're able to come in with promissory notes and be able to say, hey, like I want $500,000 <laughs> today, <laughs> you know, and they would have to do that. They're going to have to run that process differently, you know, but we weren't taught that. So that's why I'm telling you guys that. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's, this shit's so real. And I know sometimes people are like, oh my God, Lee, like you're crazy or you're just down the rabbit holes or you don't know or whatever. You don't even know where the comma goes. No, but I do know about contract law, you know? So it doesn't matter if you have a, a certificate from a huge, you know, school, Harvard or wherever the hell, because even that shit's fraud, <laughs> you know, even that is. So at that point, even if you look at your college, um, diploma, you have to kind of wonder like, or your certificate, you have to kind of wonder like, how authentic is this? Because I went through a, a, an institution that was fraudulent, that taught me wrong. We were taught the wrong history. It's his story. We were taught wrong, you know? So how much weight does your degree actually hold? You know, are you, did you go to school for accounting and, and banking and, or whatever? You know, were, were you taught wrong? Possibly. Rothschilds wanted workers. They didn't want thinkers. They didn't want thinkers. They didn't want you to do your own due, due, due diligence, your due diligence. They didn't want that. You know, they wanted people to be submissive and docile. Is that the word? And dumb. You know, it's like they're going to teach you the way and this is what it is and do not ask questions. Same thing for me in the church. I would always get in trouble in church because I asked, I had questions. I'm like, if you want me to know this guy, this guy, Jesus, Yeshua, if you want me to know him, then I have questions. Oh, you can't ask questions. We go by the Bible. Okay, well, I have questions about the Bible. No, you're not allowed to ask questions. Okay, well, who, who answers my question? You're going to have to take it to Jesus. Okay, well, I did, and he told me to come back to your ass and ask me what this is. Why, why is this not adding up? The math ain't mathin', and I don't even math. My common sense is saying that something in this is wrong. So I got in trouble a lot in church just for asking questions, which now is a huge red flag to me. You know, if the pastor wants all his sheep or all his congregation to learn this and understand this, then you would feel that these people, if it's, if it's really a thing and it's the up and up, then you would think that the church would want people to ask questions so that you had a better understanding of it. It's the people that kept going to the elders that kept asking questions, but then they're getting, you know, shunned, right? You can't ask questions. Yes, I can. I'm allowed to because if I'm God's child and I have questions and I'm coming to the church with questions and you guys are not answering my questions, to me, that's a red flag. So then you start going outside the church and you start to figure out who you are. And you're like, ah, you guys are, are you sure you know your Bible? <laughs> because what I just read is not what you're thinking, you know, but at that time we're already considered label and outcast and black sheep and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Tin full hat. Tin full hat, y'all. So, anyway, I'm about to head out and about. You see all my curls. Not curls. Not curls at all. It's more like waves. It's like a bend. 
I went for the bend look today, but I love you guys. If you have any questions, ask. Um, I know my, my YouTube, um, I need to, I've been like, I don't know. I'm just really busy right now and I don't want to give it excuses, but honestly, like that's really what it is. Plus I moved and all the things, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll get back on that. I do have several people that I want to go live with and bring that to you too, because it's pretty epic, especially with even, uh, what is it? Child protect C CPS CPS. Um, there's a gentleman that I've spoken to that is helping people like get their, get their stuff together with CPS or even child support or anything like that. So I want to bring him to the table so that you guys can listen to him too. He's got a wealth of knowledge. Um, but I will get, excuse me, I will get onto that soon. And I love you guys. Please have a good day. Keep your vibration high. You know, I say that all the time. It's true though. Keep your vibration high because even now, when I start to study this kind of stuff and then like I hear something about like that's really like bad, like I don't know, just stuff that's going on. It's like I'm I'm above that. I don't even I'm not. In, that's not my timeline. I don't even have like I don't have those thoughts of, you know, like just crazy stuff going on, which then you have to also wonder, too, is it even true? Is it the media that is fabricating all of this stuff? Like, what was it? Uh, the QAnons will say that Israel is last. Well, then I start thinking, well, wait a minute. I understand Israel is last because a lot of the sex trafficking stuff actually comes out of there. But on the flip side of that, that building, it was a white building and it kind of went like, nah, and then it went down. That was from a couple years ago. So if you didn't hear that and then you're looking at it now, you're like, oh my God, all these buildings are dropping. That was from a couple years ago. They're replaying bullshit that happened years ago. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence and finding, you know, the, the truth. Find the truth. And um, you know that there's crisis actors. You know that there's all this, you know, just it's all a facade. It's fake. Again, go back to that toxic relationship. When you're in that toxic relationship and you're seeing all these fake people around you and you're just like, I can see it now. Like, I don't even want to be in this. You, you guys are sick, mentally sick. That's when you can start to take yourself out of it. And yeah, there's going to be a tower moment or there's going to be, you know, like a hermit moment where you're going to have to go inside and it's going to feel very lonely. But the thing is, is that God wants you to feel that way so that you can mentally get your shit together and then come up through and start to create your own reality. Yes, there are ways that you can approach certain businesses with a promissory note. If you have promissory notes or even you have securities on the back end. So that's that's already a thing. Like, don't worry about that. That, that kind of stuff can go into your trust. But when you start to create that, like if you're getting a house or you're wanting to buy a car, do a promissory note. This is what I told the guy the other day. He said, I really need, I need a new car. Like my car is like a piece of shit and I really need to get another car. I said, go to the car dealership, take a picture of the outside that has all the, like the deets on the outside of the, the car, open up the door, take a picture of your van or even like in the window or whatever, and then bypass financing. You don't need the financing. The car is already paid off. The car is already considered abandoned. So now take all that information, go over to your bank and say, this is what I want. Write a promissory note to them and say, this is what I want. They're going to transfer it. You don't even have to go to financing. That's, that's, that's bullshit. It, you, you don't have to do that. You can t literally write your own promissory note. You're the bank. You're the securities. That bank wouldn't be shit if you didn't come to the table. You know, they want you to, to open new bank accounts because they're trading your stuff on the first and secondary market. They want that. But now if you approach them as like a secured party creditor, or even if you have good faith and credit, when you authenticate your birth certificate and you have good faith and credit, then that's, they can't do anything about it. You're, you're standing steady. You're standing like strong. Like you're like, no, I'm not, I'm not playing your games. Stupid? No. <laughs> I know how to do this and I understand that you're messing with me and I understand that you want me to sign all these things and I'm not, I'm not contracting with you, you know? And when you do that is whenever you can start to take back your own identity, you know, cause it, it has been traded on the first and secondary market, you know? It, and that's another thing when, whenever you work with like the W4 sandwich, it is called the W4, it's kind of elementary, 
because it, it's, it's the audit. But on the flip side of that, once you fill out all of those forms and you send it into the IRS with a cover letter of instruction, they, they have to do the audit. There was, there was identity theft, right? There was um, deception, deceptive forms, you know? And then when you go to them, the IRS is our friends. I know the media is like, oh my God, like the IRS will really get you. No, they, they don't get you. They don't, they don't get you. They want to keep a ledger. They want to balance their books. They want to make sure everything is balanced, right? But on our side, we don't balance our books. So we keep having to pay taxes. Become tax exempt. That's a couple, that's a couple uh, forms sent into the IRS. Or if you have a homestead or if you have somewhere that you can bury an actual person, <laughs> if you can bury somebody on your property, if somebody dies in your family, I mean, I have a list, but it's fine. If you can have that person buried on your property, that instantly makes you tax exempt. Instantly. Why? Because the government is going to protect that because there's a body on your property. You know, and it doesn't mean your dog and it doesn't mean your fish. It means a actual body on your property. It'll make your, uh, your property tax exempt. But you have to know that in order to do that. So these people that have like hundreds of acres of land I was going to say, put a dead body on it and you'll be tax exempt. You won't have to, you know, bury Meemaw on there. Thanks, Meemaw. You just made me tax exempt. Like, you know, but, but those forms, you have to learn how to send that off to the IRS. And when you send that off, then it's like, you're done. You're Gucci. I'm, I'm tax exempt now. Just with a couple forms. Got my banker's EIN. Got my foreign bankers EIN, got my trust account set up. I'm starting to funnel everything in, you know, so if you have questions or anything like that, I don't mind helping people. I, I don't mind even sending you to like certain people that actually talk about that. Cause I'm not talking about like, I'm not, I'm not working with mortgages, although my timeshare that's in Treasure Island is a mortgage. I have the warranty deed on it, so I'll be working on that. But right now, if you're working with even like your lease or your car note or anything like that, it's literally recontracting with them. Because if you've been in that contract for several years, then you are like, they're trading it. They're trading it on the first and secondary market. They're making money off of it. So you can come back and contract and say, hey, like, I, I want 80% of that. I know you're fucking up, but I want 80% of that and you can keep 20. Don't do that shit again. <laughs> you know, so I love you guys. Uh, follow me on um, TikTok. And then also, ooh, um, also YouTube. Again, I apologize because I have not kept my YouTube channel up. I've been in the middle of my move, but I love you guys and I'll meet you guys.